Nvidia calls it quits. They got no horn. YouTube wants to explore some NFTs for the regular creator, and Valve comes out with a nifty, handy little feature that's gonna help the Steam Deck. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're gonna start off today's episode talking about the news that shook the world. Everybody! was so surprised by this. There was so much just like, how could this happen? Pandemonium in the streets. Everybody thought the exact opposite, which is that Nvidia is pulling the plug on their $40 billion arm acquisition deal, at least according to a Bloomberg report. And Nvidia hasn't specifically come out and confirmed this, but Bloomberg is confirming with sources that behind the scenes, Nvidia is essentially getting ready to call it quits on this entire operation because surprise, freaking surprise, the FTC sued them. The EU didn't want this to happen. China didn't want this to happen. Basically everywhere there was a regulatory body to approve this acquisition. They were like, but you're gonna be evil once you get them. And Nvidia's argument was like, but no, we were, uh, you're saying that everybody else sucks when you call us evil for doing capitalism. Why? Why can't we do a capitalism? Obviously, there's some artistic interpretation there, but that's the general gist you need to get out of this. According to reports, SoftBank, the company that currently owns ARM is instead of having it bought out by Nvidia, is going to have it go public instead. So if that way you want to actually contribute to the diversity of chips that are at our disposal, you can invest in ARM yourself instead of having to be like, Daddy Nvidia, could I please some have ARM? And he goes, no ARM, you no ARM for you. Obviously, the regulatory trouble that's going on behind the scenes here is really difficult for NVIDIA to get through. The current deal as it's situated will expire as of September of this year. NVIDIA saying that they were confident previously when they announced it that it would get through in 18 months, which uh, no. Uh, but then additionally, because of this falling through, they may have to pay SoftBank $1.25 billion because of the failed acquisition, which that should be chum change for NVIDIA. They make billions and billions of dollars. Obviously, it's not as good. But I mean, just honestly, Honestly, from the day this was announced, everybody was like, there's no way you're gonna be able to do this. And Nvidia was like, just watch us. And now they have to go, just, we're not gonna, we're not gonna talk about it, especially since the Bloomberg reports that Nvidia wants to keep this quiet, which, <laughs> no, Nvidia, if you're gonna try to fart around and try to create capitalism monopolies, listen here. We don't stand for that, all right? We submit to it where we have to because it's already in place. But wherever there's a chance that I can complain about these things happening before they do, I'm gonna do it, all right? Nvidia, bad, bad. Don't do this again. Naughty, naughty. Don't try to buy Risk Five now, okay? Just don't, just stop. There is some speculation though, because we talked about this in last week's episode of Hot News, that Nvidia was bolstering their CPU department over in their Israel division. This could potentially be one of the reasons why they're doing that, because they anticipate that ARM is just not gonna be their way of the future and they have to develop everything in-house instead of bringing ARM in to do all of that kind of stuff. But let me know what you think of Nvidia not getting ARM. Can't think of any good puns. So just let me know what you think of this down below in the comments while I let you know what I think of today's video sponsor. My friends, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. It's a new year, it's 2022, which means new opportunities for learning, for growth, for creative expression, and you discovering who you want to be. And Skillshare is here to help out with all of that because it's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore either their creativity, learn a new set of skills, or just invest in yourself for your own personal growth. Whether it's photography, graphic design, freelancing, you're just trying to take better care of yourself. Or for me, one of the classes that I found most helpful was finding fulfillment, using pivots to power your creative career. It's no secret that my life has undergone a series of pivots over the last several years. Most of them forced on me, only one or two of them I personally chose, but being able to come back from that, reestablish your footing and learn to grow in my creative career as a YouTuber has something, this has been something that's like, there's no guidebook and Skillshare at least has a course on it that helps me me to wrap my head around it and get better and focus on what I'm gonna do moving forward. And my friends, it's ad-free, which means it's focused on learning so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring your new skills. And there's new premium classes launching every week, so there's always something new to discover. And the entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. So my friends, you can check out Skillshare at the link in the video description. The first 1,000 of you will get one month free trial of Skillshare to start exploring, finding out where you wanna express your creative and Endeavors. Again, Skillshare.
Skillshare. It definitely allows me to do that, and I want you to try it too. So check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. You want to know what something I learned just recently? Horizon Forbidden West is looking better and better by the day. We got our first hands-on preview courtesy of IGN. And my goodness, I'm not going to spoil a whole lot here, but in case you're interested in this next-gen sequel of Horizon Zero Dawn, just the combat itself looks insanely good and better than what it was in a in the previous game. Like this, this move, I'm not going to be dexterous enough to pull this off, but holy crap, that was awesome. And I really look forward to seeing, we'll leave a link in the video description in case you want to check out their hands-on preview. This game comes out February 18th. I am super stoked for it, especially after seeing this preview. And Electronic Arts EA excited that Respawn knocked it out of the park with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and they're commissioning three more games or Star Wars games to be made by Respawn Entertainment, the company behind it, which is going to include the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order sequel, a new first person shooter game, as well as an undisclosed third game that's going to be coming out. So in case you're a Star Wars fan, just get ready for a deluge of just oversaturation of everything you love and hold dear. We're just going to keep on getting more of it. Why invent new properties when you can just build on existing ones that everybody loves? OK, that's what I'm saying. And everybody loves crypto stonks. That's what I hear. So let's get into the crypto stonks update. Bitcoin having a good day up 3% to be at 37,153. That's that's a pretty decent increase from its hard times previously. $703 billion market cap right there. Ethereum having an increased day of 3.75% to be at 24.72, still below $300 billion market cap. And Dogecoin up 7.5%. You can see a sharp spike that happened earlier in the day. Oh, look at that, 14.8 cents. Currently, it's at 14.3 cents. But you might be wondering why? What's going on here? Uh, it's because Elon Musk tweeted if you couldn't guess like that's the that's the only reason there's ever a huge doge movement is because Elon Musk did something and essentially as far as I'm aware he said that hey if McDonald's accepts dogecoin I'll eat a happy meal which like what robot nonsense is that like you're gonna you're not a child Elon make like you can have a full grown man meal why would a happy meal I guess because that's the best branding. I don't know. Big Mac would make more sense. I don't know, man. I just I criticize these billionaires. I'm not one of them. Let's get into talking about the meme stonks, though. GameStop having a further worse day, being down 1.1%, be at under $100, $99 is where it's sitting at. AMC down 2.7% to be at 16 18 And while my Yahoo Finance ad is not very good this time around, I mean, it's just Squarespace, which I mean, everybody knows about Squarespace. The one I got before while I was researching this was insane. Okay, Catelyn, show them what it was. Yes, how to wipe butts. Why do I need that ad? What does that say about me as a person? Is this targeted? What's going on there? How do I, who did it? What? Not only have I been a man of 31 years with at least 30 of that being butt wiping experience, I also have three children of whom I've had to wipe their butts. I just like, I got, I'm good. I'm good on the butt wiping experience. But YouTube's not good enough with all the things that they currently have going on. It's not enough for them to remove dislikes. Now, at least according to their priorities for 2022, according to the CEO, Susan Wojcicki, she's saying that, hey, uh, the creator economy is great. Look at all these 11 trillion, 5 trillion views that we've gotten on shorts, okay? We want to increase that with NFTs, okay? We're looking further ahead to the future and what's going on with Web3 and crypto and NFTs. Ooh, baby, we want some sweet NFTs into YouTube, which obviously I potentially have been a critic of NFTs, especially in a lot of the implementations that they've been in, especially in the stupid profile pics and JPEGs that they are, where like the smart contract is literally just a link to a freaking artwork that's just could be randomly generated and would look exactly the freaking same. I'm normally against that. However, obviously, because I would have a vested horse in this race because I am a creator, I do think that NFTs, when it comes to working with creators and connecting the end consumer or the people who want to be participating in the content, they do make at least somewhat of sense because I think they allow without financial regulation, which I think is the biggest problem that I have with this. I don't want to be my own bank. I just don't understand why everybody has to own everything. I don't need 
all of the responsibility that comes with ownership in every single area of my life. I like divesting responsibility in certain scenarios and having finance be one of them where there's actually, you know, the FDIC as well as other banking protections. And that, anyways, that's not necessarily the entire point. I was trying to say something positive, which is the idea that potentially NFTs could be purchased by the audience members who want to invest in a creator that they see. Let's say they find a creator at 100 subs, they have NFTs unlocked on their YouTube channel that gives the creator a cut every single time you resell that NFT but you could potentially buy into them at 100 subs and then because you believed in their content you become an active investor in whatever they're making you have an incentivized advantage to promote their channel they get up to a million subs your nft is now worth I don't know, 100 times more, you could sell that, you make a quick profit for actually believing in somebody, they actually get a cut of that because of the way that the NFT and the smart contracts are baked in, it could make a whole lot of sense, or you could potentially invest in like specific videos that could work, especially when there's videos like the one I'm making where I had to put a $5,000 investment into what's going on instead of me having to raise that money myself or doing brand deals that I otherwise wouldn't have done in order to get the cash, I could go to the audience and be like, like, hey, you can get a potential cut of the AdSense revenue by buying this NFT. YouTube is then the middleman in all of that, making sure that all of the finance stuff of that is taken care of and that the responsibility is not on me to actually go through and cut a check to every single person who buys the NFT, but it could potentially be something that's good for creators. And there's actually a great video that came out about this two days ago before this whole YouTube NFT thing by Colin and Samir about why Mr. Beast should sell his channel or at least partial ownership stake in his channel. I'll leave a link in the video description for you to check that out. But I do think there is promise in NFTs and smart contracts when it comes to showing support for the things you believe in before they're actually mainstream appeal. That's the, the general idea or giving an ownership stake of the audience to the creator at hand. Obviously there are things out there like Patreon, which we do have one of those, but those aren't necessarily guaranteed to give you anything besides, hey, I say I'm gonna fulfill this and you're just gonna give me cash. You don't have ownership stake in anything I create there on, although you might have a financial vested interest it's not quite the same because you can't then resell your, it's Patreon on steroids, I guess is the conclusion I'm coming to as I'm talking this out. Anyways, that went on way too long. Let's move on to talking about how Google thinks cookies have gone on for way too long. They actually were trying to replace this a little while ago with the flock or federated learning of cohorts, but now it turns out that that's probably not gonna happen. And they're working on potentially replacing it with topics API, where they assign topics to you based on your most visited websites and make sure that those follow you around the internet so that you can get targeted for ads on very specific things like hiking or you know those other websites you visit, that Club, Club Penguin, Knock off, you gotta stop going there, it's giving you malware. Google saying that it's looking to the end of the first quarter of this year to launch the trial for Topics API, but potentially trying to figure out how do they replace the third party cookies and still make money. Now let's talk about something else that I think it's kind of stupid at first, but then when you actually think about it, it does make a lot of sense. Elgato announcing a new Stream Deck pedal, which allows you to press buttons on the floor, up to three of them, in order to interact with their Elgato Stream Deck software so that you can control various things on your computer. It's gonna cost you 90 bucks, which is a lot of money. However, while this might not make a lot of sense for the average streamer, there is a lot that can be unlocked with accessibility features here where you can use feet, especially if you don't have, you know, the typical hand setup that you otherwise would, or you don't have the motor coordination of your hands in order to stream having something simple like this to enable that is good obviously there's been like foot pedal activation switches that have exist especially in the um what's it called when you when you transcribe things transcriptionist is that it what what word am i looking for doesn't matter those are obviously exist this is just more the general commodification of that and elgato also announcing that they're going to have official discord stream deck plugins that are going out as well with this launch so you can check that out the link in the video description if you case you care about that but we're not talking about the stream deck anymore we're going to talk about the Steam Deck now, okay? The very different devices. The Steam Deck, Valve coming out and saying that, hey, you want cross save across your PC and your Steam Deck? You can totally do that. And that feature is gonna be called Dynamic Cloud Sync and not in reference to Final Fantasy VII at all, okay? Essentially how this is gonna work is you put your Steam Deck into sleep mode. It then does all of the cloud saving things and sends it to the cloud. That cloud thing downloads to your PC. You go onto your PC and then you can play. That's essentially how it's gonna work. If it's not enabled, it's 
Steam will just basically be like, hey, you should st shut down your Steam Deck before you load up on your PC because, uh, hey, you, you might not have the save data you want. So it's a neat, neat little feature. Obviously, Steam has had Cloud Save for quite some time, and this is just going to be the further iteration of that in order to make it so it works with handheld and then go into your desktop. I like it. I like to see it. I want the Steam Deck. I want it now. Give it to me, Valve, as soon as possible, please. And I'm going to end this episode of Hot News as soon as possible because I, I've got no more in me. Okay, I talked too long about NFTs. That takes the sand sand out of my wills. The wind out of my sails. It, I, I've got no more sand left, people. See you tomorrow.